and welcome back to the finishing line so this video we're going to concentrate on entry day two so we get started with the first race which is at 145 the handicap hurdle over two mile four so the betting is as of now who there wins eight to one lock their spirit eight to one spirit of the game nines storm home nines zubar twelves Eamon on uh, Canucked uh, tens Wild Louis on the 14, Leiden 14, Cyrus Mouvier 14s and 16 the one bigger. So I start on uh, the one that I fancy and that would be Spirit of the Games. So he's up 10 pounds since his last win in November. Um well he's holding his form while he's running well in the big in the big handicaps and I think he's gonna run another huge race at 9 to 1. I think he has very good handicap form. Dan Skelton's horses seem to be still running well. And British Andrews is taken off at £3 off of him again. So I think he'll have a good place to place at least at 9 to 1 is a fair price for him. So another one I'd be interested in is Wild Blue Yonder. Um, he came back from a huge absence uh, at the start of the year. And he's a stone lighter than he was in his prime. So he's very, very well handicapped. It looked like on a second run back that he's at, he bounced from that, but he, there was a pile of money from that day, but he didn't get the job done. So I'd be willing to take a chance with him again at 16s. 16s or 14s and get in the place. And one's a bigger price, Irish Raider, uh, Grand Partner. He won his last race, very good form, won it well enough, he's 16s. And one that runs very well at this track is Messini's trip of James Nash. Uh, he was third in this last year. He won at Aintree the November before that, and he won it very well. So at 20 to 1, he's a, he's a solid each way chance. And uh, in all in all, it's a very hard race to pick the winner. I recommend if anything, you're backing this, back it each way. A few places you get. Paddy Power doing five places, uh, 50 the odds, if you fancy anything. So the top five, your five places to play with. So. Have a look at the markets in the morning and who's paying the most places. So next we'll go on to the 220, which is the Great One Now's Hurdle. So we start with Global Citizen, he's 9 to 4, Vision Day Flow, 7 to 2, Slate House, 9s, Style the Guard, 9s, 10 Scarlet Dragon, and 11 to 1 bigger. I think this is a race that can go to Global Citizen. He won very well at Kempton. He absolutely galloped his rivals into the ground and I think Aintree is going to be the same. A nice flat track, speed up front. I think it's going to be very, very hard to peg him back. Uh, I think it's going to set Darrell Jacob up with his another winner at Aintree Festival. I think he's going to have a very good festival now after yesterday. And at 9 4, he's shot a lot shorter in places. I think Paddy Power taking a chance at 9 4, he's 7 4. With Boyles, and I think he's six to four at Labrooks. Uh, one the other interesting one is Vision Day Flow. Uh, he was he absolutely hacked up on his start in Exeter, and he was six ten at Chetlam in the um, in the Ballymore. It was a very good run, but I think the fact that Global Sydney skipped Chetlam is going to deal him all the good in the world. And the flat track, I don't think the ground's going to bother him. I don't think it's going to be as bad as it was of today or yesterday, depending on when you watch it this video so I think it's Global Citizen is the best in this race and the horse that finished second to him in Kempton was Scarlet Dragon a very good flat horse his jumping was terrible at the start of the race at Kempton but he got the hang of things I think he, he could get closer but he needs to improve a lot again to get closer to, to Global Citizen uh, ones at bigger prices uh, Irish Row of Peter Atkinson's, he's been running away all season. He got sneak into the place. Simply the bets of Harry Whittington, he was... There was word about this horse for Chetton that he's going to be, be a very good EP bet. And if you want to take a chance, he's 33 to 1. And one of a huge price is Bedrock. He won his first race for Ian Jardine. He was trained by Dan Skelton before that. And they taught a lot of the horse. He won a few good races. He was second... At this meeting last year too, Bouvet, uh, I think it was Bouvet Air over 2-4. If you forgive him his few bad runs, he seemed to be back in love with the game. And at 50-1, to 1, 
backwards 50 to 1 shots. But at the end of it all, I think the better at this race is Scarlet Dragon. Or not Scarlet, sorry. Global Citizen at 9 to 4. So next we go on to the 250. The 3 mile 1 grade 1. So we have Terra Fort, 7 to 2. Elegant Escape, 5s. Mia Storm, 6s. Miss Pafwa, 6s. Cool Star Sephora, 7s. Black Horton, 15 to 2. Snow Falcon, 8s. And 20s bar. So we start with Terra Four, second in the JLT. Ran a very good race. Um, the four, well, not the form hasn't been left down with um, the winner of the JLT names that are coming out my head now. Or the JLT got best by album photo at Fairy House there just over a week ago. And the horse he bet at Sandown. Surname got bet there yesterday, today, in the first race at Aintree. But, you see, Nicky Henderson says this fellow doesn't do a tap at home, but he shines when he comes to the racetrack. And that's the kind of horses you want to be training. And he's 72 fairy. He's already favourite of what he's done. But the one I like in this is Elegant Escape. Now, he was third in the RSA behind Percent de Percy and Monolly. He was seven lengths behind Monley, and Monley was seven lengths behind uh, Present and Percy, but I think that's very solid form. And I think back to a flat track, Elton Escape has a huge chance of winning this. His form is much better on flat tracks than it is on undulating tracks. And he'd be my pick in this. Other ones that have a chance, Coup Stars of Ola, uh, winner of the Handicap Chase at Chetlam, stepping out of Handicap Company integrated races now. I'd like to see him step up a bit more himself and Shantou Flyer pulled a long way clear of the rest and Shantou Flyer is a very well handicapped horse. I think he's going to take it in a stride. I think he could be easily placed at worst. Another one to mention is Miss Pafwa. She was second to Raph Inden in the four mile at Cheltenham. Ran a huge race for a long way. But I just think on that evidence, I think three mile is a bit short for I think this horse is a, it's a grand national horse in the making for next year. Love the trip social at Cheltenham. She'll be staying at staying on at the death. She'll be running through the line. But I think she's just going to be caught for toe by a few of the a few of the speedier horses. Another one is Mia Storm. She was running a huge race at Kempton before she tipped up on on Stevens Day. She'll be another one. Black Carton. I think the wheels, not the wheels have come off. I think she's had to have, he's had to have too many races. He's running since last summer. I think it's time to call it quits. Uh, Snow Falcon, very talented hurdler. Jumping is his let down. He fell in the Irish National there a few, uh, about a week ago. And if he jumps better, he's the class to, to play a hand in this. But at the end of it all, uh, I think Elegant Escape back on a flat track. We'll take a lot of beating in this. And Colin Tizzle's horses seem to be caught really firing at the moment. I think he's a great bet at 5-1. to one. So next we'll go on to the 3.25, which is the 2.5 mile grade 1 chase. So we have Min, 11-10. to 10, Balco de Flo, 9-4. Politolog, 6s. Cloudy Dream, 12s. Le Parisien, 22s. And Sizen Granite, 40s. So I personally think this is a match between Min and Balco de Flo. So Min was second to Altior in the champion chase, ran a huge race, looked the winner until Altior decided to turn on the turbos. And if Cena, if being as good as he was over two miles at Chetlam over this trip at Aintree, I think he could take he could take a, a bit of beating, but I like the form of Balco de Flo. I like the way he got the job done at Chetlam. His jumping was immaculate. He jumped to the front two out against Underso and he never ever looked like getting back. He looked like the further he went, the better he was. So on the evidence of back on the flow proving that the trip, I'd be siding with him at nine to four. So I think it's gonna be a forecast, back on the flow, I'm in forecast. Uh Plis log I don't think is good enough. Cloudy Dream is a spoofer. Le Parisien uh needs to step up on his Chetland win big time. Even though Gino Trail ran a huge race there today to finish third. And Sizen Granite needs to, needs to step up huge. So I think it's back on the flow first and min second. Be a very good race to watch. If you don't have a 
betting it, just sit back and enjoy it. Uh, next we go to the uh, the 405. So we're over the national fences in this. It's a huge field, so we've uh, TSR Territory at 9s, 007 10s, Top Gamble 11s, Polydam 11s, Flying Angel 12s, Atmar S 14s, Bouvral 14s, Ultra Gold 14s, Barry Alton 14s, Highland Lodge 14s and 16s bigger. So we'll uh, we start with last year's winner, Ultra Gold. I'd say the plan all year has been to get back in this race. He didn't win a race all year, the year before that, until he got here again. And I think this could be the plan again. And again, Colin Tizard, he's having a, he's having a very good, his horse are running very well so far. And he's been back already. He's, I see here he was 25s last night and now he's 14s. So they think they have a very good chance of retaining his crown. Good jumper, likes it around the fences. He'll have a huge chance. Uh, one that I like is Big Bad John of Nigel Tristan Davis. Won his first run from after switching from Rebecca Curtis there a few weeks ago. And I think this horse could be still well handicapped. He's 16 to 1. He's a big raw horse. He jumps well. I think he has a huge, huge chance of placing at least. Uh, another one uh, down a bit would be a 40 to 1. 40 to 1 would be Clarkham. In a bit of class. Back in the day, and he he seems to be fairly well handicapped. I know he's beaten, he's been running in greater races, beaten, been beaten fair and square. But I think back in handicap company, back in Camo Wars, I think you see a better car cam than what's been shown. And David Russell's had to take over, so he could he could show himself into a better light now. But again, as a, as in on the first race, uh, Paddy Power playing six places for this, so it's nine to one the field. I'd say you can get 10s, 11 come tomorrow because people are trying to get you to bet with him. My, my pick would be uh, Big Bad John, a 16s right now. He'd be my bet in this. And another one to look out for is Ultra Gold, Horses for Courses. I like horses coming back to defend their title. Um, and Willie Mullen sends over Polly them. So you can't you can't discount a Willie Mullen horse. And he's had to have a wind surgery since his last one. So he couldn't approve for Markley. Uh, for his last run and his first run of the season he won very well uh, at, at Navin so there will be my picks in that it would be Ultra Gold, Big Bad John and Polylam but it's my feel if you feel like you, you want to back something just go with your gut I'd say in these races so the next we go on to is a 640 and this is the 3 mile grade 1 novice hurdle so we've uh, Santini 2-1 to one. OK Corral, 5-2, uh, Chef de Zobo, 9s, Tower Bridge, 9s, uh, Roxana, 11s, and 14 to 1 bigger. So we start at the top with Santini, third in the Albert Bartlett. Just behind, actually, OK Corral in that. And I think OK Corral's going to hold, that, hold up that form. That was a grueling race. It was run on the Friday where the ground was at its worst, I'd say, at Chetland. Uh... Chef de Sobo ran in that as well, and he was pulled up on it, so it was a very, very hard race. Tower Bridge also ran in that, came fifth. I think flat track for him could see him in a very, very better light. He won around Leperstown um, at the Dublin, Fe Dublin Racing Festival. He won the grade one, and I, he ran very well for fifth in the... Um, I said he ran in the... He didn't run in the... Albert Bartley, he ran the Martin Pipe. And he ran a very good race to be fifth in that behind blow by blow. But the one that's interesting to this is Dan Skelton's uh, Roxana. She's on a four-timer. She's She won the Saturday after Chetland at Kempton. And she won it very well. And I think she's going to be underestimated in this. Uh, she's very impressive. Visually very impressive. And it, you can see even with the Chetland form, never take it as a given that the Chetland Forest is going to hold up or they're going to be better as they are. I think OK Corral hold the form of Centini, but I think Roxana could be the flying ointment to a lot of them. So at 11 to 1, I, I think she's going to be back and she's going to be shorter. But I take the chance of Roxana and OK Corral will hold, hold form with Santini. Santini is going to be an unbelievable chaser. He is huge. 
he has that big stride he's going to respect his fences so much more for that keep an eye out for Santini next year keep, put him in a notepad so I'd go with Roxana in this at 11 to 1 uh, and anyone that I wouldn't put anyone off OK Corral either it's just the fact that Henderson horses aren't running great even though my bite my boy did what my boy does and won uh, today. So if the money keeps coming for Roxanne, I'd be very interested in that. But if not, if she starts drifting on the day, if they don't fancy or something's going wrong, I'd, I'd be on OK Corral to win this one. Uh, so we go on to the last, which would be the Grade 2 bumper. So we have Danny Kerwin at 13 to 8, Mr. Fisher. 5 to 1, Pim 8, Trevano 8, Mercy, Mercy Me at 9th, and 16 to 1, Bigger. So, my advice on these kind of races is more or less follow the money. If the horse, the horse you like and there's money going on it, get it before it shortens the price. So, there's one been backed already, uh, Danny Kerwin. He's gone from 3 to 1s into 13 to 8 favours. Uh, he won at Kempton. And he won it very, very well. He won it going away at the finish. It was hands and heels. He had. He showed his inexperience when he hit the front, but he won it very well. I think he's going to come off for that a lot. So he'd be my boy betting this, given the way he won it. And Paul Nichol, Paul Nichol said the other day, this could be his best bet of the meeting. Uh, but an each way bet would be a uh, pin. Uh, same orders as Altior. He won his first race in a bumper. He was up there as fighting for favouritism for the champion bumper boy. They uh, they missed it and they went to Kempton instead. He finished second behind Danny Kerwin. And I think the two of them will be fighting at the finish as well. So he's a fair bet of 10 to 1. So in the bumper I go Danny Kerwin and if the day is going well I might do the forecast Danny Kerwin and Pim. So I'll just run through the picks again. So the 145 would be Spirit of the Game, Wild Blue Yonder, uh, each way. Uh, the 220, uh, Global Citizens at uh, 9 to 4. The 250, Elegant Escape. The 325, Balco de Flow. Uh, the 405, uh, my number one pick would be Big Bad John. The 4.40, if I was nailed down my match right now, Roxana. Uh, and finally, the 5.15, the bumper, Danny Kerwin. So again, after this, I'll have up the last day of Aintree, the Saturday, where I'll go through all the races, bar the National, because I've a previous video up already about the whole Grand National. So keep an eye out for that, lads, and thanks again for watching, and like and subscribe.